Hi, it's Mrs. McKelvey back with the next story in 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey. This is another one of my favorite stories. I remember this one from the very first time that I read it when I was a little girl. It's called The Face in the Courthouse Window. Since 1878, there has been a picture of a man's face so indelibly stamped on a window of the Pickens County Courthouse that it looks as if a photographer had snapped his lens and made the likeness on the glass pane. But it was no human photographer who reproduced that countenance, which reflects the anguish and terror filling the heart of a man who knew that he was coming face to face with a violent death. The courthouse in Carrollton was burned to the ground on Thursday morning, November 16, 1876. The fire broke out in several places at the same time, and for this reason, the blaze was held unquestionably to be an act that was set deliberately. The burning of the courthouse unleashed an emotional torrent that swept away both patience and reason of the people. The courthouse was more to the residents than just a seat of county government. It was a symbol of their defiance of Yankee authority, sturdy evidence of their determination to overcome defeat. The original courthouse, you see, had been burned by Yankee troops under the command of General John T. Croxton on April 5, 1865. It was a senseless burning, serving no military purpose, and it infuriated and embittered the residents of the county. In those days following the Civil War, the task of rebuilding the courthouse seemed impossible. There was no money. Materials were scarce and expensive, and skilled labor was hard to find. Yet somehow they did it, and the courthouse was rebuilt. Even the occupying federal troops who were camped in Carrollton during the post-war years were impressed by the achievement. To the citizens whose work and sacrifice had rebuilt the courthouse, the building represented a restoration of law and order. It was to their sense of stability as well as to their pride. Then, less than 12 years after their first courthouse was burned by the Yankees, the residents of Carrollton watched helplessly as their second courthouse, the one they had struggled so hard to rebuild, was consumed by fire. It was almost more than they could bear. As time went on and nobody was able to point the finger of justice at any suspect, the citizens of Carrollton became uneasy and they began to criticize the officers of the law for not finding the criminal. They demanded that the sheriff produce the person who had burned the courthouse so that they could rest easy in their beds at night without waking frequently to see if they smelled something else burning. The sheriff realized that he must find a suspect, and fast. Henry Wells, a black man who lived near the town, had a bad reputation. His temper was high, and he had been involved in several fights. It was rumored that he always carried a razor. Nobody really saw him set fire to the courthouse, but he had been in town early on the morning when the fire occurred, and rumors connecting him with the burning began to be circulated, especially when no other suspect could be located. In spite of the fact that there were only vague evidence against him, Wells was arrested on four counts, arson, burglary, carrying a concealed weapon, and assault with intent to murder. Wells swore that he was not guilty and he was being wrongfully accused, but in a group of men gathered about the square on the salty three afternoon of his arrest, feelings against him ran high. And with the aid of some corn whiskey, it ran even higher until it reached a dangerous pitch. The air on that afternoon was oppressively humid. In a black, ragged cloud west of town, there was the rumbling of thunder 
and it gave an additional menace to the already ominous situation. Men began milling about, demanding immediate action against Wells. Soon, someone produced a rope, and hasty plans for hanging him at once were made. In an effort to save him from the excited crowd, the sheriff hid Wells in the attic of the new courthouse. But his whereabouts were soon discovered, and bent on vengeance, the angry horde closed in on the courthouse, ready to break its door down if necessary to be able to reach their prey. Wells knew why they were there, but he went to the attic window, his face gray with fear, and confronted them, defiantly shouting at the top of his lungs, I am innocent. If you kill me, I'm going to haunt you for the rest of your lives. And as later events proved, he did. Just as the bloodthirsty crowd was about to get into the building, a bolt of lightning illuminated Wells' tortured face behind the window pane. And Henry Wells' picture was caught by the lightning, they say. And it has remained imprinted on the attic window of the Carrollton Courthouse from that day until this. Accounts vary as to how Wells actually met his death. One story says that the lightning killed him. Then, sobered by this event, the crowd dispersed, satisfied that God had given the proper punishment to this criminal. Another version of the tale says that the lightning flash alarmed the mob, but not enough to stop them from hanging their victim. At any rate, everyone agrees that this night had been the last of Henry Wells' life. The next morning, a calm day after the tumultuous night, a member of the lynching party was passing the courthouse. He glanced up at the window where he had seen Wells looking out the night before, and he turned pale with fright. He rubbed his eyes, silently cursing that corn whiskey he had drunk the night before. He looked again, and again he saw the face of Henry Wells peering down at him. He knew that Wells was dead, and he began to scream that the devil had come to haunt him. His screams brought other people to the scene, and they too saw the face of Henry Wells, distorted by fear, but an unmistakable likeness looking down at them. The face was still there the next day, and the next and the next. Hundreds of people came to gaze in awe and disbelief at the eerie likeness. The sheriff was particularly upset by the accusing face. He was often seen carrying buckets of water up the steep stairs to try to wash away the symbol of the town's guilt, but he only succeeded in making the picture even more clearly defined. No amount of scrubbing, not even with gasoline, would remove the image from the window pane. It is still there even today, plainly visible on the lower right-hand pane of the attic window. On at least one occasion, some people say too, every window pane in the Carrollton Courthouse was broken during a severe hailstorm. Every window, that is, except for the pane with the image of Henry Wells on it. And on stormy nights, some people swear they can hear Wells's cries coming from the twisted mouth of the face in the window. And they say that you can still see that face today. So that's another place I'm interested in someday going to check out and see for myself the face of Henry Wells in the courthouse window. Well, we've got some more thinking to do with our activity to end the story. So the courthouse in this story burned twice, caught on fire and burned to the ground. Both times the fires were deliberately set, but sometimes fires happen by accident. And so you're more thinking to do. I want you first of all to see do you know when Fire Prevention Month is? Well, October is Fire Prevention Month. 
And one of the things that they suggest that people do is check their smoke alarms. Well, you're not supposed to just check your smoke alarms one time per year. You're actually supposed to check them every six months. And guess what? It's just a little over six months since October. So I think it would be a great idea for you and your family to check your smoke alarms, to make sure that the batteries are working, to push the button and see if it, the alarm will go off. And you can even have a practice fire drill. It's always a good idea to talk with your family about what if your house did catch on fire? Where would you go? How would you get out of the house? And where will your family meet up? My family made a plan back when my sons were in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts that we would meet by the big tree that's in front of our house. So talk with your family and see where would you meet. And you might even in your booklet want to draw your plan of how you would get out of the house and then where would you meet in the case of a fire. Well, I hope that you check those smoke alarms, and you have a good time making a plan with your family. And until next time, bye-bye.